We're back on The Big Show here on Broadway. It's Alex Bell. If you're talking to the biggest stars, and trust me, I know I say this a lot, but they don't come any bigger than Michael, our next guest. How are you? I'm very well, thanks. Michael Saberi, now help me with your name and where you're from, because you're playing King Arthur in Spamalot, and we think you're terribly British. Tell us your story. Yeah, well, I was um, born in Malaya, actually. Uh, my father was a doctor in Malaya, and um, brought all his, had all his children there, went back to England, uh, and then decided to emigrate when we were small. So I was raised in Australia, which is where I went. To, uh, and uh, when I left school, I went to drama school in Australia. There was only one called NIDA, National Institute of Dramatic Art. Uh, and, um, and I started working in Australia uh, at the South Australian Theatre Company. And then in about 1979, uh, I went to England to, to start off there. And I joined the RSC. Uh, and that's where I've spent most of my time. And then about 1985, I think it was 85, uh, I came over here for the first time with a revival of uh, Nicholas Nickleby with the RSC. And I've been kind of coming backwards and forwards ever since. Uh, and um, here with Spamalock just at the moment, which is great. How do the RSC regard something like Spamalot? Because I often have this row about Panto with proper actors and all of that business, that it's not, oh, no, 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 it's not proper theatre. And, and Spamalot, oh, no, it's not proper oh, theatre. No. no, I did, years ago at the RSC, we actually did a Panto. It's called the Swan Down Gloves. And it, uh, it was a kind of, it was, it was terrific. It was done at the end of the season. Everybody had something to do. And uh, I, I, can't, I vaguely remember the, the, the first performance. We were all walking around backstage not quite sure how it was going to end we were looking at bits of script and things and saying oh, I do this I do that but the RSC put it on it's a, it's a great English tradition and I think you know there's, there's, that's what span a lot is really it's, it's panto it's difficult to explain that to the Americans but it's it's in the same tradition and it's it dovetails very well with a sort of classical repertoire and things like that so it's silly, it's stupid, it's hysterical, it's funny, it's just brilliant. And I love this type of theatre where opportunities created from nothing just so that Eric Idle can get his gags in. I love that. Oh, yeah. Well, that's very much the, the style of the original Monty Python, I think. There was, I mean, the, uh, I, I, I it's a vague remember here, a documentary they did a while ago talking about they would just go out with a camera and some stupid costumes and... Not quite sure what they were going to do, but they did something. And and I guess it's sort of it's it's been a bit more formalised in this kind of uh, and a Monty Python take on Broadway or vice versa. Uh, and and that's the 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 fun of it. It's the sort of irreverence. Uh, it's it's this great sense of humour which which has become so kind of familiar to people all over America, which is extraordinary. Uh, I just finished the tour. It's still out there, but I was on the road for a long time. It was a chance for me to see America. And the, 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 uh, how well people knew all the Monty Python gags and, and lines was quite astonishing. It's universal, I think. And what is great about this, if you're not into it and you think that you're not a Python fan, you can still enjoy it, because I'm not obsessed with Python. I don't no. know all the gags. No, it's very much a, a piece of musical theatre which is which has got that kind of Python-esque uh, slant to it, and uh, it's, it's accessible to everyone. Because it, it's a kind of humour when Python first came out, everyone could have thought, what is this? But, you know, keep watching it because it's new and different. And now it's, it's a kind of humour that is pretty much mainstream. Everyone sort of gets it. And I've interviewed a few King Arthurs over the years, and you all have to be quite tall, and you all have to have a tremendous voice, which is what you notice the first thing about you when you come on. You have this great resonance to your voice and power to it. And then you somehow have to steal the stage. What, what is that? I mean, I suppose Simon Cowell might call it the X factor, but you have to be quite controlling and big and pull focus, because that's what the character is, isn't it? Yeah. Well, I guess the nice thing about being a king is you are the center of attention <laughs> regardless of of what kind of um job you're doing uh it's 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 just uh it's a great uh character because he's in the he has the plot such as it is he's got to get together a group of knights then he's got to go and find the holy grail and then he's got to put on a broadway musical so that, that's <laughs> that's it and all the crazy characters revolve around him but i guess he's the focus because he's trying to maintain some kind of dignity and the people around him are just pointing up the absurdities of 
kingship and and the lunacy of the search for the grail and stuff like that when he's trying to maintain some kind of dignity and uh, and he's not afraid of um, suffering a bit of depression and uh, <laughs> a bit of self doubt <laughs> creeps in and all of that. It's it's just been it's just a wonderful experience. And what about farce, Michael? How difficult is that to do eight times a week and enjoy it yourself and make it enjoyable for us watching? Well, that's the great thing about Spamalot. It's 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 a show which you can sustain because it has that kind of loose feeling about it and it's very immediate and it's very much about how you connect with an audience and what they give back uh, and it's just the nature of the material is is kind of um, sustaining there, there are a lot of shows a lot of plays which you start to feel this is really hard work and, and you get a lot back out of this particular production and tell me when the call came in and they said, Michael, will you come and play King Arthur? Did you ever think, no, maybe this isn't for me? Or was it an immediate, yes, I want to see America and I want to play this part? Yeah, it was, it was wonderful. I, see, I went to see them in, in London and it was, they, they said, would you consider doing the tour? Because they knew I had a green card. And uh, like most people who come over here from England, you either you go to New York or you go to the West Coast and you never really see the rest of the country. And, and to be on a tour like this across America, it was, it's an experience I'll never do again. And, and, and it was just wonderful. And doing it with a show that makes people laugh and, and uh, full houses everywhere we went and things like that, it was fantastic. And also just to look at the script and see the lines you remember from certain sketches and think oh yeah I used to do that when I you know come back to school after watching it the night before you'd all do the skits and then you get a chance to do it on stage so yeah it was great I, I just knew it would be a lot of fun and the music is stunning because it's all it, Eric and uh, John Dupre wrote such beautiful stuff for the series and the movies and they just kept going with new numbers and old more familiar numbers for the musical and, and it's, it's got a, a lovely kind of English music hall feel about it. It's, it's wonderful. And the show isn't subtle. It's out there, it's funny, and it's closing in January, both in the West End and here. And the tour's been cancelled in Britain. That is a shame, because it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a remarkable piece. It's still carrying on touring here for at least another couple of years, uh, because they still play Python on the PBS television station here on a regular basis. Uh, and it was it was a joy to tour here because uh, people love it. It's so uh, familiar to a lot of people, and they bring people who don't know it as well, uh, and, and everyone seems to get caught up in it. And do you think you'll go back on tour with it, or have you got other ideas I, for what you'll do I, from January? I have no idea. Um, I think it's um, I think it's going to California with. Um, Richard Chamberlain, I think, might be, might be joining it or something like that. I can't remember. I never, I'm not quite sure all the permutations, but I, I, I loved it. And it'll be, so, I'm sort of sad to see it go, but I'm, I'm kind of happy and proud to be here for the final night, which will be something. You're a tremendous actor and such a brilliant, funny man as well. And that's hard to get right in a show like this because you're, you're, the point of your role is not to be in on the joke. You're kind of no, slightly you, aside from it. You, you've got to you do your best to sort of maintain your dignity and, and, and keep everyone on the same page, as they say here. But uh, it's, it's a losing battle in the end. But, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's very much the, um, the, the kind of role that Graham Chapman used to play, the, the sort of central figure around which all this sort of madness happened and uh, yeah and it's 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 a wonderfully written piece put together it's very well crafted by Mike Nichols and Eric and everybody when they got it together they worked on it extensively in Chicago before they brought it the original to New York um, four years ago I think so it's had a pretty good run here yeah Congratulations to you, and thank you so much for spending the time to talk to me, and good luck in the future. You're one of our greats, Michael Sybury. Thank you very much for talking to me. Great pleasure. Thank you. This is a total bloody disaster.